Today I have a call with Marco. He has, he's new to e-commerce from what I understand. He's opened a new store and he has questions about his LLC that he recently opened. So without further ado, let's get to this call with Marco. Haven't done my taxes, I'm too turned up. Haven't done my taxes, I'm too turned up. Hi Marco, how are you? How's it going? Yeah, good, how are you? We're doing great. Thanks for uh, scheduling a call today. Where are you, yeah. where are you calling for from? Uh, I'm calling from Serbia. So, Serbia. Yeah. So um, I have an LLC in Wyoming. Uh, I'm planning on doing drop shipping through mm -hmm. Shopify. So I opened it this March. Um, and yeah, I have a few questions that I'd like to ask you. So. Sure. What kind of um, what kind of stuff are you selling? Have you opened the store already? Uh, no, I'm gonna mm -hmm. decide, but I'm not too sure yet. Okay. Um, so I have all my documents. So I have the EIN. Uh, I have a bank account with Mercury. Okay. Uh, applied for an ITIN. Uh, it hasn't yet like been to the IRS, but I applied to it through some service. So for the ITIN or the EIN? For the ITIN, I already have the EIN. Oh, you applied for an ITIN as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I've heard like it's good for PayPal and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna be asking like uh, some questions and stuff because it's like the subject is kind of uh, kind of confusing. So I don't want to have any misconceptions. So yeah, my first question would be: um, Is there any document I'd need to submit when I'm making like the initial contribution to the LLC, or no. is like the operating agreement everything I need? If you have the account open, you're basically good to go. You just have to file your annual. Um, tax returns and that would be since you opened it March this year that would be due in April of 2021 mm -hmm. Okay, awesome uh, So do I need to like prove my uh, initial contribution? Can I use it as a like a write-off or? Um, no, it's not really an expense and you're not really paying taxes here. You have to check how the tax laws in Serbia um, How they how they affect you really how how you would have to maybe pay taxes in Serbia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, let me see. Oh yeah, so does having like a, a registered agent in the US and like their address in my company count as having a residence there? Like a permanent residence or whatever it's called? I, I don't believe it does. A registered agent is just an agent um, getting your mail. They don't have, they can't enter into any kind of contracts or agreements for your company. So they're not, they don't really work for you. It's really just you're paying someone for an address. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I was wondering, like, how, how could I minimize taxes in Serbia? Uh, like, if at the end of the year I don't pull out money from my U.S. account, do I not have to pay it anywhere? Or how does that well, work? I don't know the tax laws in Serbia, but uh, generally I don't know how Serbia would know about your business if you never bring the money back to Serbia. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they would know about any money you make. That said, you should still talk to a Serbian tax um, professional just about to say, hey, I open in a US LLC and I make money there. Does it, does it matter? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. I think it's not really regulated in Serbia yet, so. Yeah, it's probably, it's new everywhere, but you know, some countries that they're, might be a little farther behind on how they're managing uh, international like income, like non, not like uh, income from other countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering, like, I can just keep the money and reinvest it without having to pay taxes unless, like, they regulate it at some point? Yeah, I mean, again, you have to check the laws in Serbia regarding in the U.S. It's, um, it's pretty straightforward the way I see it. Again, there's other professionals out there that, that say you should be paying taxes on your profits and filing 1040NR and things like that. I don't see it that way. I don't read it like that. You can see from my other videos that I don't think um, you would be subject to U.S. taxes. But um, that's, that's just how it is now. And I, I don't think that's gonna change. That said, I don't know how, what, what, how, what the rules are in Serbia. So you might, you might have to pay taxes in Serbia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so regarding sales taxes, uh, is there like any cost to filing them? Uh, like any fee or anything? Or do you like offer that service? So sales tax is best done, um, there's definitely plugins you can use to integrate your your site with um with uh, different 
it's like software services that use that pay the sales taxes for you. For example, Amazon is one of the biggest online retailers. If you have an FBA store, they, they'll collect the sales taxes on your behalf. And it's a big benefit of selling on Amazon uh, in mm -hmm. terms of like in general compliance. Uh, that said, if you, when you, when you're selling enough products in the state to where you have to file sales tax returns and pay sales taxes, um, mm -hmm. you have to register in every state basically. Is that like a complicated process or? Yeah, sure. It's, 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 it's just a lot of, it can be a lot of work because every state where you have over 200 sales in or hundred thousand dollars worth of sales during the year during a one-year period and it's the rules are different for every single state but that's the general guidelines but once you hit that threshold you have to register in the state um, for doing sales taxes and then you have to file a, a return with the state either monthly or quarterly or annually depending on what you're doing and how, how you're doing it mm -hmm. you know, like the quantity of sales and it's different for every single state so if when when your big business gets pretty big, it can be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So do you know like how I can outsource that? Do you like offer it, or do you know any services that do that for me? Or? No, when you when you need it, um, Tax Jar is really good service. Um, they have mm -hmm. they have some cool integrations and a ton of good information. And then um, just see what what plugins there are with uh, the Shopify stores. I think Tax Jar has one though, and I and I and I really like the information they put on the internet. I don't know how good they are. I've never worked with them because I don't pay sales taxes as a service business. But um, I really like, you know, their information is good and they seem to be on top of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So if they, have, if they have a website plugin, that would be good, but don't, I wouldn't worry about that now since your store is just getting started. You don't have sales, you know, you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. that yet. Yeah, or like when I cross the 200 uh, threshold, do I just pay, do I start collecting taxes on everything above that or do I start collecting? In well, you have to register in the state first and then you can start collecting taxes. Like register the whole business or just register for the taxes? What do you mean? Like, do I have to register another LLC or just like apply there? Or no, you take your current LLC and you just register, you tell the state that this LLC is selling into the state and needs mm -hmm. to pay sales taxes. And then you have right to collect sales taxes. Then you have to remit the sales taxes you collect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Uh, another thing I was wondering, like, uh, would I have to pay taxes to the U.S. if I have a U.S.-based supplier, but I don't like they own the warehouse? I don't own anything. I do not believe you would have to pay U.S. taxes. I don't believe having a U.S. supplier um, mm -hmm. is permanent, that like enough uh, activity to make you doing business in the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if I had like my own product in a third-party fulfillment center, would that count? I, I as of right now, I don't think it does. Um, but I'm not, I can't, I don't have anything in front of me saying it just hasn't been challenged or ruled on by the IRS yet. I think they will one day, but it's, I don't think it's something you need to worry about right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. So I was like, uh, applying for the ITIN and something about like how much time I spent in the U S popped up. So is there like any threshold to like how much time I can spend in the U S physically? Sure. If you spend over 183 days in one year, then you would be a resident. And when you're a resident, you pay tax on your worldwide income. Mm -hmm. And then if you spend, um, over 120 days in three consecutive years, that would be the same result. You'd still, you'd, you'd be a resident at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's not too bad. Yeah. It's um, not, it's not too, it's not too many. It's a lot of days. You have a lot of time to visit. Yeah. Where do you usually uh, go when you come to the U.S.? I haven't been there any like ever, but I was just wondering okay. if I ever come, like how much time. Where do you want to come? Where are you visiting? Uh, I'm not too sure yet. I don't know. I'll probably come everywhere. Just need the time. Uh, I don't know really. Okay. Um, okay. So if I had like no revenue in a year, what would be like the forms I'd have to submit? Just to keep the LLC like going. Uh, form 5472 is the mm -hmm. form you have to file. And again, there's different, there's a specific way to prepare the form. And then also um, you have to pay the state again to keep the company open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, okay, if I like, uh, when would I have to reach out to you so we can get everything like filed before uh, April 15th? Um, in March fine february we can do it earlier we can do it anytime after january basically 
Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. And how much would that cost? Um, it's right now. Right now, we do it for um twelve fifty, but uh, I don't know what it's going to be next year. Mm-hmm. And like the amount of revenue doesn't matter for that. Um, no, it's it's basically it's kind of a flat fee. Uh, you just have to give mm-hmm. me the provide the information. It's not okay. a tax form. You don't pay taxes on it. It's only reporting your transactions between yourself and the company. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Uh, regarding like tax write offs, I don't pay any taxes, so that's like not a thing. Um, okay, I'll ask this one. Uh, oh yeah, so about like the LLC meetings, do I have to like have some? I've heard I had I like need to have some meetings. Like how frequently would I have to have those if that's a thing I'd have to do? No, I don't think you have to do any meetings. I mean that's when you have a corporation, you might have to do minutes, but it's really between yourself. It's like a meeting by yourself. It's not really a mm-hmm. it's not really that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that one. Not really, no. Awesome. Uh so about like accounting and bookkeeping, is there anything like would the IRS ever check those? Do I need to keep those or are those like more for myself internally? Just they, I mean, you should definitely do it as uh, you look like a young guy. You should definitely keep um, yeah. track of your accounting records. You know, that's really important to mm-hmm. you know what you're doing. It's just like it's like your business KPIs, you know, have KPIs for marketing and stuff. But it's like how your business is doing. So that's good. Um, Although most of it, you know, for you, it's pretty linear. It's pretty like much uh, sales minus cost of goods sold minus ad spend and how much money did you make? Cause you don't really have any other expenses. So yeah. it's, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to do, but you technically you're required to, to keep your books. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And like QuickBooks is good for that. Yeah. Like I don't need any services other than that. Uh, QuickBooks is probably fine. And I'm coming out. Um, yeah. I talk about stuff I'm coming out with all the time. Um, I'm doing, I'm coming out with a course and not a course, like a little mini course on how to, uh, do your, uh, QuickBooks for free. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. Um, your channel is like a gold mine. Mm-hmm. I've been like looking for information for months and like, it's really hard to find something like really good. I think th- these interviews are so good. They're fun, right? And they're good for me too. Cause I get a lot of clients, um, talking to people like this and then also, uh, it's content. It's, it's just everything. So it's, it's a way for me to do like uh, basically sales calls on and record them. So if I don't get a client, at least they get a cool video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, know. I mean, I, I got more answers from like watching a few other videos than for months of like Googling stuff. Great. Well, thanks. Please uh, share the videos, like, and subscribe everything. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get my algorithm up. I'm almost at a thousand followers and I know it's uh they're like a pretty active group of followers because it's a uh, really niche stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if I ever have any friends open up LLCs or stuff, I'll definitely recommend you. For um, sure. So I think I'll ask this one. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. So if I ever had to like dissolve my company, how would that look? Do I need to file anything? You can do it with the state of Wyoming. It's pretty, you could just Google how to dissolve Wyoming LLC. It should be like the first thing that comes up. You, I think you can mm-hmm. do, either do it online or you can do it. Um, and it should be from Wyoming state or there's another website like NOLO puts out good articles about how to do this stuff. So it's pretty, there's only like one way to do it really. So, or you could just never pay the renewal fees and it'll dissolve on its own. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Okay, so when I want to take the money out of the business, do I need to have any forms in place or just send the money to myself? Like how I would, would probably, rec- I would recommend you just spend, use it, the debit card, not send it to yourself. Because if you send it to yourself in, in Serbia, they're going to see you're making money. And you mm-hmm. don't have to pay taxes. So just try and use the debit card that you get from Mercury as much as possible. Like, can I use it for personal expenses? Yeah, sure. Use it for whatever you want. You just have to keep track of whatever it's personal. I would count as a distribution. Oh, awesome. And like Payoneer, like do I need that one or can I just use the one from Mercury? You can use, I mean, you can use really whatever you want. Just keep track of what you use personally. That's basically would be a distribution. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, so, okay, so for the ITIN, uh, does that last forever or do I have to renew it at some point? You have to renew it every two or three years. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And are there like any things I need to file for it, or is it just, just the file? No, the the I ten the I ten gives you uh, it allows you to file U S tax returns. So you need to file another U S tax return to kind of renew it. And I think you have to actually do the W seven and renew it again. That's only for the IRS. If it goes inactive, I don't know if anyone if if the IRS tells anybody other than the IRS. So if once mm -hmm. you have the number, you might be able to use it for things like PayPal and stuff in perpetuity. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how, how they verify with the IRS. At least as of now, I don't think they can. Okay, awesome. Uh, so is, is, is the ITN like a replacement for the social security number? Because I've seen for yeah. Shopify payments, I'd have to put the like four last digits of my social security number. Yeah, you use the ITIN. That's exactly what the point is. Okay, awesome. Uh, uh, so since I didn't get the ITN yet, and uh, I'd like it's to... It's probably going to take a long time. time. I have some people I've got ITINs for that it just takes... I'm still waiting. It's been like five months and I'm just waiting. And it's like no one oh. you can call. Sometimes they just don't do it. I think I'm going to have to send some of these again because mm -hmm. sometimes it just doesn't work. And it's, um, I'm, you know, I'm a certified acceptance agent. I get ITINs all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the IRS is really unreliable with paper forms and there's only, that's the only way to file and request this ITIN. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, like regarding uh, the PayPal account, would I ever have to submit that before creating it or is that like something that they ask for later on. So here's a pro, here's a hint that way you can get through most of the time is when they ask for your item and they require, just put all nines mm -hmm. and it should let you go to the next spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, so when I was applying for my Stripe account, I saw like a thing called type of business or area of business, I'm not too sure. Is that like something I have legally in my documents? Because I wasn't. No, it's e-commerce. They want to know, so Stripe is processing your payments and they want to know what kind of business you're doing so that they can expect like what, what they need to know about chargebacks, right? Because obviously uh -huh. um, if you're doing e-commerce, there might be more chargebacks because it's gonna be more transactions and then there's gonna be people who want refunds, people aren't happy, whatever. It's just more quantity of transactions and it's the nature of the business. So they wanna be ready for it, they might not like it, but if you say you do a service business, it might be a little easier to get approved even though it's not what you're doing. But you wanna, you wanna match up because they're gonna know, they're gonna process the, the transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So that's why they want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so if I if like, can I use this LLC for multiple businesses? Uh, you can use it. Not? You can use it for multiple stores. The only you just got to be careful with like um, the banks and the payment processors. If you're doing stuff that that they don't like and you didn't tell them, then they might close your account. But that's like the worst that will happen. Yeah, yeah, like I could theoretically start a different business under the same LLC that's not sure. dropshipping. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so I was looking into like getting American Express credit cards or any other ones. Uh, like on, on the Mercury uh, website, I wasn't able to find like anywhere to apply for a credit card. So do you, do you know if they offer one or do I need to? Sure, you can apply. Card? I mean, if your business hasn't started yet and it's going to be hard to get one unless you have other money and other revenues. Because they basically, they're not going to give you credit if you have no income. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. And you haven't started your business yet. So you can't, it's going to be mm -hmm. difficult at this point to get credit. Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, okay, I think that would be it. Okay. Yeah, um, that's it. You asked a lot of questions. You got through them really quick. If you have any other questions, just send me an email. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to, happy to help out. Thanks for watching the channel. And um, Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm glad to help. Good luck, best of luck to you and your business. Yeah, thank you. You too. Okay, man. Well, someone watching. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be in touch then. Thank, thanks a lot for uh, for showing up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you for the call as well. Okay. See you, buddy. Bye. So that was a good call. Marco already had an LLC. He already applied for the ITIN. He's waiting for everything to come, and he just wants to know how it all works together. Um, happy to have helped him and um I, I think he's going to be doing great things he's really on on top of this stuff but uh if you're looking to get an i10 or if you're looking to open a company or you're looking to get an eian you need help with these things you can reach out to me and i'm happy to help you guide you along the process and i'd love to work with you if you thought this video was helpful please like and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in the next one and if you want to be on a call like this, you can schedule a call in the, in the details uh, of this video. There's a link, you can schedule a call and I'm happy to talk to you as well. So again, thanks for watching and until the next time.